All right, never mind. I think he sees me. Got my questions today for Tech Tuesday. You guys are going to see. This is literally how we throw together Tech Tuesday. I come down here, I plop this in his face, we throw up the cameras, and we start talking with you guys, answering your questions for what we enjoy truly is Tech Tuesday. Looks like he's got a little snack. He's working on some stuff. Had I done this first thing in the morning, it was like a half a smile. Had I done this first thing in the morning, well, I was tired. He was extremely cranky because you are Let's call it like it is. You're overwhelmed yeah. right now with a lot of work. Yeah. Transmission stuff going on with C8s out your ears. Yeah. Out a few other places too. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to let him fill in the blank, but that's quite all right. Let's just state the obvious. I still left it open. Right. So. Yeah. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Chuck's happy to see some C7 stuff coming in here. All right. All right. So we're going to get set up. We're going to have a Tech Tuesday. This is how we do it. Literally just come in and say, bam, stop what you're doing. Read these questions and answer them. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Tech Tuesday and thank you for the great response, everyone. Uh, we love having conversations with you guys. We love sharing your questions and answers and hope they help in your Corvette ownership. First, I, for, last week we talked about my car being fixed. Thank you. A lot of you guys still asking, hey man, is your car fixed? You back on track yet? Well, not on track yet, but the car is fixed and you did get it done faster. But I didn't mention last week, thank you for not only getting it done quickly, but you cleaned it up very nicely. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you don't want to leave all that nasty grease on the car. I so bad wanted to get an apron for you to be wearing that, you know. <laughs> okay, let's talk about things in the marketplace before we get into the Tech Tuesday questions. You and I have been talking off camera and actually in real time right now, so please don't text me any questions. I'm actually out of town, uh, but we wanted to get this upload for you as we do each and every Tuesday night. The controversy and the conversation about the GM letter going to block the warranty of a 23Z06 if a customer would sell it within a year of ownership. Here's the one thing that I think, there's so much talk about this, but Chevrolet's never done a rewards on a new product. It's not like it's distressed merchandise and a car's been out for a while and we're transitioning into a new generation. Brand new, hot car, and if you keep it a year, they're gonna give you $5,000 in reward points. That's real money. They've never done that. Sure. And I think that's to make you slow down for a second and go, wait a minute. And we've talked about it. Enjoy the car. Once you start driving this car, you go, oh, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not so worried about selling this thing. This is for real. Yeah. It lives up to the hype. I need to keep this car and enjoy it. But most of you are not going to do that. So, um, we haven't talked about it yet on the channel. I was telling you again off camera. Uh, we've talked about it last week, how GM has a suspected exporters list is our responsibility. As I told you guys a couple of Sundays ago on Coffee with Conti, it really kind of, this all kind of starts with us, the dealer. We've got to say yes for the right reasons, no for the right reasons. And I told you guys, there's an exporters list that now has been expanded to an exporter slash reseller list. Don't think for a second that they don't have a team of people watching this stuff and everybody's trying to outsmart everyone. Let's give you a couple of more stories for the, for the story bag for you. I had one guy, big YouTuber, um, he kind of had that YouTube fasana, facade arrogance, whatever. Okay, so we weren't doing business because I, he wanted to title it in a Montana LLC. I said, you can't do that. Yes, for the right reasons, no, for the right reasons. So I'm talking to another Chevy dealer friend of mine and says, oh, I'm ordering a car for such and such. Well, he was just ordering a Stingray with me. Now he's ordering a Z06 with my buddy. And I said, oh, interesting. Did he tell you he's going to title it in a Montana LLC, a state in which he doesn't live in? He goes, oh no, you're kidding me. So he calls the guy, says, hey man, what's up with this Montana LLC? They go through it, realize you can't do that. He says, okay, so here, there's a couple of points to this story. So he's gonna do the paperwork, pay the taxes as he's supposed to, okay? So he was whining about the taxes because he thought he was above all that. But anyway, she's gonna <laughs> take the shot when I can. Oh yeah. <laughs> but So he's gonna pay the taxes and then he's gonna sell the car to his Montana LLC. So that tells me two things. He doesn't care about paying the taxes because he has intentions to probably flip the vehicle. Sure. sure, I'll pay all that tax, not a big deal. But here's what he's gonna do. 
And I'm sure this is how GM's gonna do that. And this is longer than I want it to, but we really do need to talk about this stuff. So he'll register, pay taxes in his personal name transfer it into the Montana LLC and that's where the flag is going to be thrown and GM's going to see that it's changed hands of ownership different names he's going to block his own warranty <laughs> well obviously a warranty he don't care about if he's looking to get rid of the car anyway no that's exactly right he's going to put it on the other guy yeah I watched Steve Lato uh, he's an attorney I believe out of Michigan really good guy uh, people have asked him about this scenario. Can GM do this? For those of you that want to sue GM, save your time and save your money. I trust Steve. Steve says, yeah, they they can do this. It's, they're the one back in the warranty. If the car's not sold in the proper manner or put into an area where they can't back their own product, they're going to block the warranty. You, that's, that's their call. Yeah. yeah. The stories are endless, and we've got to keep revisiting this issue. So listen to this. Somebody sent this to me. It was up on Facebook. I won't mention the guy's name. He goes, I'm just curious why everyone thinks that not being able to transfer a warranty from individual owner to another will deter guys from flipping a Z06. I'm at the top of the list on three different dealerships. Planned on taking the first one that comes in and selling the other two. The other two will be titled in different LLCs, which only cost $200 to set up. I plan to sell that LLC to the new buyer of the car, which means the car will never be sold and re-registered, as we were just talking about. It'll stay in that original LLC so the warranty won't be blocked for the new owner. So he plans on reselling these cars already, and the guy's gonna get three of them? I've got a list that's a gazillion miles long. We're gonna have, at the time of doing this video, we haven't gotten allocation announcements. Uh, when I get back on Thursday, I think we might have a little bit of information. I told you there's a hint coming on how they're going to determine the distribution of allocation quantities. But at the end of the day, guys, if they start end of September, October, they're going to build, what, through May, maybe the first couple of weeks of June? You're, you're looking at half a year production. So I don't know what kind of volume that everybody thinks they're going to get their hands on. Uh, this is going to be a lot lower than you think, and I think this sentiment will continue into 2024. Well, it's happened since 2019, since the C8's been released. Between COVID, the pandemic, I mean. Uh, oh, Chucky, you missed a, you missed a spot. <laughs> hey, do you have any Tech Tuesday questions? Oh, what? actually, I do. I know, I, I know it's Tech Tuesday, but this is market news. This is stuff that people no. really are talking about. Yeah, I agree, dude. It's jacked up. There's tons of videos out there talking about it. it sure. We being a retail entity, I think it's important to share at least some real conversations and some real bizarre situations. There you have it. Okay, I do have a question for Tech Tuesday. Uh, hey, Chuck. Oh, I'm sorry, this one. <laughs> He's bringing it around. <laughs> this one's for you. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Says, hey, Chuck, why do I have to tell the dealer that I've added the two course of trans fluid? Do they lose that much more or more fluid when changing the trans filter? No. But the problem is, if you don't tell, if you go in for your first service and do, do not tell your dealer that you've added the two quarts, after they change the filter, the first thing they're going to do is pull the plug to add more fluid to it. Now your two quarts of or two liters, it's liters, not quarts, your two liters is running out on the ground because you didn't inform the technician, hey, I've put two extra liters in, so you might want to be careful. And when you change the filter, it loses anywhere from six to eight ounces. So that's why you want to tell them, hey, when you do my first service, say, hey, I've already added the two liters. So the last thing you want them to do is pull that check plug out because it's now two liters above the check plug. All right. Thanks for joining us. It is oh, hold on. Oh, wait, the oh, oh, the yeah. second part of this is I'm tracking my 22 C8 Z51. What should I change? My brake fluid to dot four. They, they already come with dot four. Uh, have you done that? Is it a big job? Changing the brake fluid on the new C8 is a big job. First thing you have to do is disconnect the battery because it's all electronically controlled. It is a big job. I would probably refer to the PDF that Rick's put up a couple of times about oh, the tracking stuff. Yeah. yeah, depending on what level he's going to, right. to participate in tracking, see what applies to you. The track PDF, uh, what Chuck talking about, if you're not on your big screen TV, link is down below in the description. Yeah.
Okay, is it my, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. It's your turn now. You have the floor. I feel, like, I'm actually, I feel like I'm trying to hurry now because we've been talking so long and I got all these questions. Okay, uh, Kevin, thank you for the email and thanks for watching the channel. It says, Rick, I think my dealer forgot to install the front splitter, that three-piece plastic portion on my Z51 Corvette. Am I correct in assuming that the Z51 package comes with a front splitter? Yes, in fact, it does. Here's the picture he's talking about. And yes, you were correct. You're supposed to get that. He goes, I saw you last Tuesday. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I saw you last Tuesday at the Z06 tour at your dealership, and you were kind of surrounded by guys. I didn't want to bug you. Uh, Kevin, thank you again. Yes, there's a big bag that Chuck gets at PDI, and that's probably down in there, and there's so much going on in that bag. No. See, the problem is the front splitter is in it by itself in a small bag. I thought it was in the big bag. No, it's oh, probably, it's it could have been underneath the floor mats and okay, the guy didn't even it. see it. Yeah. So look at, look in the, it's actually, when you look at whether it's Cooper convertible, it's usually tucked all the way against the back wall. Right. So it's actually and, easy to miss. And sometimes the floor mats get thrown in on top right, of so it, so it, now. It might be really in your car or he just got it and threw it out. But right. yes, you're entitled to get it. So go back to your dealership and get it installed. Correct. All right, thank you. All right says, hey Rick, my name is Jim. I have a 2022 C8R Accelerate Blue Corvette with just over 1100 miles. My problem is the striping decal going over the roof of the car has developed bubbles at the second scene behind the liftoff roof. Have you come across this problem and what is the solution with GM? I also went to blank Chevrolet near my house, it just X's, and spoke to the body shop guy. I told him I had a C8R and he was like a deer in your headlights. What's that? <laughs> I told you, you can't be a hillbilly with a fake hillbilly voice. It doesn't work. He had no idea what I was talking about. And when he looked at it, he asked me, well, who put it on? Well, I even had to tell him that's how Chevrolet makes it. And I purchased a car brand new with four miles on it. I don't think I'm talking to the right people here. Can you please advise? Well, you, <laughs> I would probably agree with that assessment. You're probably not talking to quite the right person. Well, there's multiple pieces to that decal. And we've had a couple of these already happen because Chevrolet down at Bowling Green has somebody else that puts those on after the car's made. So those are put, not all decals, as we know from the big Stingray R, we got to put that on here at the dealership. But the C8R comes shipped from Chevrolet, as you guys know, already on the car. But if you have an area, one section, the parts guy can identify that part, order it in, and then in most cases, what's gonna happen is that Chevrolet dealership is gonna have to get somebody that specializes in putting on vinyl stuff. They'll get them paid through the warranty claim, but yes, you can get that fixed. So definitely go back to your dealership or a different dealership and get that taken care of. All right, this one comes from David. It says, watch you and subscribe to your channel. Love the tech Tuesday with Chuck. Uh, you've helped so many of us with our pre-selection options on C8, which are still waiting. Fingers crossed. Chuck, is it possible to add MagRide to the future in future vehicles, which originally came without MagRide? Inversely, could they be removed with simulators? And how about the front lift option? Could it be added? No, I'm sorry, guys. It, like we said before, it's all hardware and software, so yeah, I. The best I can tell you is order with the car with what you want. But, yeah. Or enjoy what you have. Or enjoy what you have, yes. Around it. All right, here's one from Scott in Colorado. It says, Rick, I also enjoy the Tech Tuesdays with you and Chuck. He is a true jewel of a technician. Well, thank you. He did say technician. <laughs> I, I call him a few other things off camera, so. Yeah, mechanics not allowed. You, you fill in the blanks. <laughs> oh, that wasn't one of them. <laughs> anyway, one item I noticed on my car is a hole developing in the passenger side headliner of my hardtop convertible. I think something is causing that from lowering the top, but I haven't figured out what. Have you or Chuck seen this? And um, if you did, do you have a fix for it? And is this a warranty item? So uh, here's a quick picture of what Scott is talking about. And yes, if it's caused by a defect in the manufacturing process, yes, that'll be covered under warranty. As long as it's nothing that you put in the car and you actually put it in the car and then drug it across that and cause that hole. So that'll really be up to your local dealership to determine, because I talked to you off camera. I don't think you've seen any of those no, yet, I have you? No, I haven't seen anything like that. No. Okay, all right, Scott, good to hear from you, Mike. Thanks again for your support and your business. All right, this one comes from Dennis. It says, I just bought a beautiful 2013 C6 427 with 14,000 miles. Congratulations, nice car, I like them. 
There was much controversy about the engine. Some say the owners are crazy not to get the valves rebuilt. Others say the owners are crazy not to spend the big bucks, the big bucks money to go through that procedure. I'm wondering on which side of the issue will you will you fall? Uh, well, my mom always told me if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. So I know they had some issues with the valves in those cars, not a lot. So I mean, it, it's personal preference. All right, one other thing it says, P.S. My other Corvette is a 2019 C7. Was the upgrade transmission fluid put in at the factory? My dealership has no idea. Uh, if you bring up that bulletin, it'll give you a cutoff date or a date when they started adding the fluid, new fluid to the 2019s. It'll go by your bin. So that that's about the only way I can tell you if it's beyond the bin break point, then yes, it's got the new fluid. Just, depend, it, just depending on when it was actually built. When it was actually built, yes. Okay. How many more do you got? I got one more. All right. I'm going to uh, do one more here, and then uh, we're going to wrap this up. we got some great-looking cars to show off, you guys. Thanks for joining us on yet another just wild and crazy Tech Tuesday. Your questions, hopefully the answers are helping you guys also. The conversation like we had at the beginning of today's show. It's a conversation that needs to be had, has been had, and will continue to be had as it develops in this uh as we said last week, wacky marketplace. Uh, this one comes from uh, Steve. Uh, Rick, your Tech Tuesday video helped a friend. Uh, my wife and I are big fans of your channel for several years. Thank you so much, we appreciate that. I make it a point to always catch the Tech Tuesday segments. They're extremely informative and relative to Corvette ownership. That's what it's all about. In fact, if you guys have a question, a troubleshoot problem, or you want to know how to use something in your car, that's what these segments are about. Email Chuck and I, and we'll do all we can to get to as many as we can each and every Tuesday. He says, well, last night, friends who are fellow C8 owners uh, were on the road and literally in the middle of nowhere, they called and asked and said they never experienced this, but the dashboard lights went totally blank on their C8. He goes, and I remember in a recent segment, you described a similar situation in your C8. They went through the procedure. Short time later, we were rewarded with a picture of a fully functioning dashboard. I just wanted to say thanks to you guys. Continue to do what you do for the Corvette community. Keep up the great work. Steven from a 303 area code. And what he's referring to, and I've had a couple people call on this. One of my customers I helped troubleshoot. It happened to me and a couple of you guys have benefited from what we're talking about. You get your C8. We've talked about it. This is, this is a computer on wheels. Yeah. You don't turn on your computer and start banging on the keyboard. Turn it on, let everything fire up, everything start communicating. But if you do that, and the dash and the infotainment, everything's black, nothing's working, turn off your car, keep your door open for about 15 minutes. It was easy for me, because the first time it happened to me, uh, it was at night, so I was able to tell when the cycle was complete because the interior lights went off. So about 15 minutes. What you're doing is putting the car to sleep and then restarting it. So then you close the door after that sleep mode occurs, open the door, restart it, everything should be good. You'll know that it's working because as soon as you open the door, you're gonna see everything start going up on your infotainment screen. So I'm glad that helped you and we'll continue, as I said before, many times over, reiterate things like this as C8 continues to get in more hands out there. Stuff about maintenance and oil changes, that's still to come in these segments. So thanks again, you guys for watching. All right, Chucky, wrap it up. All right, this one comes from Al. It says he has a 2014 non 51 near 30,000 miles with a manual transmission. He's developed a cold engine clutch shutter when starting from a dead stop. Uh, he also reiterates, I'm very easy on the clutch. Usually let out on the clutch almost at an idle. I'm not a clutch slipper. Uh, does not matter if I try a higher RPM, start or slip the clutch, it just makes the shutter more. Once the engine is warm, the shutter goes away completely. Uh, usually this is only the initial backup out of the garage, pull away from the house and stop sign and the end of the street, then it disappears. When the engine is in normal, normal operating temperature, the car is in Florida, so garage temp never gets below about 60 degrees. Trans shutter started suddenly after a 1300 mile drive from Florida to Wisconsin. The only thing unusual that happened during this trip was a tremendous rain and windstorm for about a half hour. Sideways rain, the car amazingly stable at speed in this downpour and turnpike speed just south of Nashville. First time I pulled out of the garage in Wisconsin, there was a shutter. Uh, da, da, da. This one's pretty detailed. Yeah. We went past the third pine tree in the second rock and went around the corner. <laughs> Dude, get to the point. <laughs> well, yeah, he just wants to know if we've seen anything like this, and unfortunately, I have not. Uh, he wants to know is, is the clutch service contaminated by the water or what he went through. 
Uh, I, I don't know. He's not looking forward to paying for a new clutch. So he's done a couple of clutch bleeds on the slave cylinder, which hasn't helped. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything like this yet. Uh, and you're dealing with clutches, man. So you're talking about wear and tear, and yeah. you can get 100 guys in every one of those will wear differently. So it really depends on the manner in which that car has been driven. It, it very well could need a new clutch. No offense to you, you just, you just don't know. Right. The other thing that you and I were talking about that I think that it could be, and I used to see that a lot because we won't see it anymore because we don't have manual transmissions, and pretty soon you're gonna get these kids and go, what's a manual? But um, uh, when you start off and you get that skip shift, if you're not in that sweet spot, and he mentioned, I think he said he was going at slow speeds, well, yeah, I mean, he, he said it, it shutters back and out of the garage when he takes off and at the stop sign. Okay, so as, depending on how you're transitioning, clutch versus accelerator, yeah, you could get some shutter in there, and you may not be going fast enough. At start, get that clutch in, RPMs 2000, as you're going and transitioning from one to two, it's going to be a lot smoother, and, that's, and it could be that you're just coming off too slow off the clutch and maybe you don't realize that you've changed your driving habits over time as you start to get comfortable with the car that, that's common and you, you you can get that so uh, just some honest feedback you know there's nothing in the in the description from chevy that we're seeing any troubleshoot issues hopefully that helps you a little bit maybe just kind of take take a step back and think about how you're driving the car and the situations we talked about maybe that helps you man so hopefully so hopefully so Anything to add to this wacky day? I'm all done. I'm all out. <laughs> I think you've got some cleaning to do. Uh -huh. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We really do appreciate the support. Make sure you thumbs up this video. Make comments down below. Check out that track PDF and see if that pertains to your driving situation. If you're doing very serious competitive driving, definitely look at that PDF. But don't go. We're done talking about cars. We're going to show off some cars. These are your beautiful rides. Thank you, sir. That was good. I was like, point. You guys see me point at him? It's like, oh, what did, okay, it's my, it's my line. <laughs>